This is End Screen Noise. My name is Colin Dixon, founder and chief analyst at End Screen Media, and today is July 8th, 2020. How we ascribe value to the products and services we use is a very subjective thing, but knowing the value users see versus the competition can be so helpful in evaluating how your business is doing. Uh, case in point, well, this is End Screen Media, so I'm going to talk about TV services and their value. Now, as I mentioned, it's a very subjective measure value. Uh, for example, it's affected by all sorts of things. If you watched Hamilton on Disney this weekend, on Disney Plus this weekend, well, if you loved it as much as I did, then you're probably going to value Disney Plus a lot more than if you hadn't seen it or hadn't use it, used it. But the value evaluation by consumers en masse really gives you a reading on how your service is doing in keeping them, keeping them happy. Now, in Hub Research's recent monetizing video study, they actually asked users how much value they ascribed to each of a group of services. And uh, they were SVOD services and traditional TV services. Well, I think it's probably no surprise to learn that Netflix came out on top. 73% of Netflix users rated it as excellent or good value. And Hulu and Disney Plus did pretty well too. 70% of their users said that it was excellent or good value. Amazon Prime, 69%. Even Apple TV Plus had 62% of its users saying that it was pretty good value. Uh, and actually, if you looked at just those ones who said it was excellent value, Disney Plus came out just ahead of Netflix. So pretty interesting. Not so good is the traditional media. Renting and buying streaming movies, only 44% said that that represented good or excellent value. And cable, satellite, and telco TV services not good at all, just 42% say it was good value and only 14% rated it as excellent. So that's a really poor showing. Uh, but how does the intangible value metric relate to how much people are paying? Uh, sure, everybody wants to spend less on the products and services they use. That goes without saying, uh, but Hub actually tried to get at this by asking people how much they spend and what they thought was reasonable. Now, yes, reasonable is another very subjective thing and probably related very closely to the value they ascribe. But it really, once again, gives us an idea of how successful a service is doing in satisfying its customers. Uh, averaged across all TV viewers in the study, well, people said that they were spending about $94 a month in the US. They thought a reasonable amount was $72 for a difference of about $22. But when you break out pay television from SVOD, from streaming services, boy, the difference is huge. Traditional people using traditional pay TV only, they said they spent about $106 a month and a reasonable price they thought was $69 for a difference of $37. In other words, they thought they were spending 35% more than what they considered to be reasonable. Streaming only, well, those folks say they're spending about $60 a month and they think a reasonable amount is 54 for a difference of $6 or 10% of what they are spending. So value perception and the amount you pay clearly seem to be related from the hub data. Uh, and when the value proposition really gets out of whack, as it seems to have done with pay TV, it cannot be good. Low satisfaction, customers feeling ripped off. Well, that has led to the industry losing 6 million subscribers in 2019 and probably going to lose a lot more this year. SVOD, well, SVOD looks a lot more secure, certainly much higher satisfaction and much more close to what people think is a reasonable amount to be spending. But you know, individual services may not be doing so well. 
and taking account of the value people ascribe to your service versus other similar services could be a very, very smart thing for you to do. So maybe it's time to, the, to you to do a survey of your customers. Uh, so if you really enjoyed this analysis, why don't you hop on over to the End Screen Media website and sign up for our newsletter. It's free and can be had weekly or daily. And by the way, while you're there, you might want to whitelist end screen media if you're using an ad blocker. And the reason that is, is ad blockers hide a lot of very valuable information on my website. So for example, you may not know a new free white paper is coming out or a new, new free research is available for you because I use banners to advertise those to you. And unfortunately, ad blockers remove them. And by the way, we never run ads for just any old product. So you'll never see pamper ads on my site. You will never see a streaming video ad on my site. We only run banners which promote industry-related materials. So we'll see you again next time.